So iOS 18 public beta is out and Apple is continuing to lean into this idea of customization, personalization, making iPhones feel more like yours and look less like everyone else's. On top of all that, there's tons of new useful features that a lot of people are going to be excited about, I think. To be clear, this video isn't about every single new feature because there is a ton, but this will be a deep dive into the ones that stood out to me, which include changes to the home screen, control center, photos, messages, and a section at the end of the video on all the little changes within iOS 18 that I appreciate with, of course, explanations of how the features work, followed by my personal thoughts on those changes. Let's start with changes to the home screen. By simply holding down on the screen with your finger, press edit, then customize. You have free reigns to change icon sizes, colors, you can go to light mode, dark mode, you can do whatever your heart desires here. I'm personally not one to make use of the tinted icons. It looks okay, it's a bit too much for me personally, but I am a big fan of dark mode icons. I think those look really cool. You can also finally, finally, move icons wherever you want. So that way it's not impeding on the subject of your wallpaper, for example, which hasn't been, you haven't been able to do that on iPhones for years. I also noticed if you hold down on apps that have a widget functionality, you can change it to become a small widget or a large widget. And then you can also do the reverse and change a widget back to its icon, which I think is pretty cool. You can also lock down apps on your home screen to require face ID by simply holding down on the icon, then pressing require face ID. Then you have the choice to only require the face ID, which I'm saying over and over again, or you can hide it in the new hidden apps folder in your app drawer, which will then require face ID to get access to it. I'm not one to make much use of this, but I'm sure tons of people have sensitive stuff on their phone that they would rather keep private from others. Although I do find it a little bit odd that the hidden apps folder is in plain view on the home screen, making it not very hidden and, and somewhat obvious that you're potentially hiding something. I don't know. I guess I, I'm not sure how else they would execute that, but I do find that contrast just a little bit funny. Next up is the control center. This might be my favorite change of all of iOS 18 because it makes it so much more useful now as you now get multiple customizable pages of controls at your fingertips. All you have to do is press the plus icon at the top and you get free reigns to customize the size of your controls. You can add controls from a laundry list of different options, which is really cool. And you can have as many pages of quick access controls as you want. Me personally, Personally, I only require two pages to be set up with an emphasis on having a remote icon at the top right as I use my iPhone a lot to control my Apple TV and other useful buttons like Shazam and low power mode, which I added there as well. This same idea is also available on your lock screen where you can change the controls at the bottom for something else. A fun fact though, I've tried so hard to change the flashlight to a different function, but I use it so much in my daily life and it's been like the default for so long that I still keep the flashlight there and I swapped out the camera instead for the remote icon for just, again, quick controls for my TV. Okay, so let's talk about the Photos app. It's been completely overhauled and if I'm being honest, I felt super confused at first. I didn't really like it at first. I didn't really know how to navigate or control it, but thankfully over time, I did get used to it. And this is normal and with like with in life, whenever there are big changes, it does take time to adjust to those changes and it's no different with the Photos app. But to be clear, there are a lot of really cool additions here that I think a lot of people will like. But before we dive into that, I do wanna thank Charge for partnering with me on this video and sending over their Shargeek 170 power bank, which isn't an an exaggeration to say that it's the most unique and feature-packed power bank I've ever gotten my hands on. It features an incredibly unique transparent prism design that feels premium and looks like nothing I've ever seen before. It comes with two USB-C and one USB-A port that allows for fast charging of up to three devices at once with a maximum output of 170 watts, which is wild, and an incredibly fast input of 140 watts, which allows you to recharge the battery from zero to 50% in just 20 minutes. Combine that with its 24,000 milliamp hour capacity, you literally have all day power for your devices. It even has a smart display as well to give you full visibility and control with key information on the screen. It's IP66 water resistant against water splashes and spills, and it's completely safe 
safe to bring with you on airplanes when you do travel. So whatever situation you find yourself in where you need to recharge your devices, the Shargeek 170 has you covered in the best way possible. So if you want to keep your devices powered all day long, click the link below to buy yours today. Thank you, Charge, for partnering with me on this video. Okay, so let's dive into the Photos app now. When you scroll down for the first time, you'll see a new slew of collections that are automatically generated by topics like recent days, trips, memories, people, and pets. If you press on any one of them, it will give you a pretty cool look back at that point in your life, either in a photo or a video. If you swipe right on the photos grid, it comes up with these cool like greatest hits catalog, which has highlights of what the app deems as your best content from the past in a really cool poster-like view that again, you can tap into and relive those moments. And to be clear, this updates on a daily basis. So you will get a new set of photos each day for a cool surprise. So it's kind of a cool incentive to keep documenting your life and letting your iPhone help you relive those moments at surprise times in the future. It almost makes me think that when Apple intelligence comes around, I, I wonder if that back end system either on device or on the cloud can help even foster up even more meaningful memories in the past for you to relive in more like niche specific ways. I'm not sure how they would do that, but it would be interesting to know if they do plan on integrating AI to this sort of feature set here on the Photos app, you know, in September onward. I think that's something Apple should think about. But anyways, let's talk about messages now. I'm super content with the changes they've made. To start, iPhones finally support RCS messaging, which if you've lived in iPhone land your whole life, you may have no idea what I'm talking about because all you are used to is iMessage, but it's essentially a messaging protocol that works like iMessage, but it is compatible with Android phones. So you get things like read receipts, typing indicators, it just makes messaging between Android users and iPhone users in their default messaging apps less tedious. It's gonna feel the same. So like, thank you, Apple. Finally, we've been waiting for this. You can now also send more playful text. So you can send in bold, italics, underline and strike through in your messages now. You can add fun animations to any letter, word, phrase or emoji to get your point across to the person that you're speaking to, which is really cool. And they added the ability to tap back with any emoji or sticker. Finally, it felt like this was only available on other messaging apps forever. So it's cool to see this finally available on iPhone. I also haven't been able to test this out yet, but the messages app now supports satellite. So when you have no reception, no Wi-Fi, like you have nothing, you can still send messages via satellite that are still end-to-end -end encrypted, which is pretty clutch to be honest. And this is all free, there's no charge to this, but the only caveat is that you do need at least an iPhone 14 or later. So it's not gonna work with older iPhones. So those are all the big changes that caught my attention at least right away, but there are a ton of small things that Apple did that I did really like from this update that I wanted to share and just sort of fire away at at this point in the video. To start, the Notes app got some nice updates with things like having the Note autocomplete a math expression. So we don't need to go back to the calculator to get that added up. We can also finally create collapsible sections in notes and highlight them as well, which is just wild to say that this is a feature that we're getting in a note taking app in 2024. So thank you for finally bringing this. Or the fact that there is a new passwords app that will centralize all of your credentials into a secure place. I think a lot of people are gonna love this app if you live within the Apple ecosystem. However, for me, I'm reluctant to use it because it only works on Apple devices and Windows, but it doesn't work on Android phones and I use Android phones on a daily basis. So it's a little bit too restrictive for me to make the change. I'm probably still gonna be sticking with one password for now, but if Apple makes this available on Android in the future and it works well, I will have happily cancel my subscription at 1Password, like no problem. The Apple Fitness Plus app was redesigned, which I really, really like. I basically live in this app as I do workouts all the time. So it's super cool to see quick summaries of my day at a glance. You can customize all this too. So I'm a big runner, if you didn't know that. So I have my weekly distance, average cadence, and average pace on my screen when I click into the app at any given time. And these numbers are just super useful to see at a glance to manage my training load and, and just to make sure that I'm not running too hard or that I'm hitting my goal cadence for the week, which 
as of this video, I, I'm not hitting my goal cadence, so I do need to work on that, but you know, it, really cool changes to see here in the Fitness Plus app. So that's iOS 18, but let's switch gears to my iPhone 15 Pro Max specifically, where I recently shared my long-term review of the phone, and if I regret buying it, it's a really good watch, super valuable for you to see. Click right here to watch it now.